Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 16 of Who the Hell Asked. Uh, I am your host, Byron, alongside my co-host, Slade. Slade, how are you doing? I'm good, Byron. How are you doing today? Life happened, uh, which is why we didn't have an episode last week. But we're back with quite a few topics, uh, including this first one. We, men we mentioned it a little bit last week. Slade, Slade mentioned it a tiny bit, our last episode. But Media Tonic is joining the Epic family. Technically, the whole Tonic Games studio is joining Epic. Did not see this coming. Yeah, so it seems like Epic's trying to expand, you know, its reach a bit more. Especially with these other really popular games like Fall Guys and whatnot. Epic seems Hell, to... I would be yeah. surprised if the Epic tried to acquire... Uh, inner sloth games yeah, I, I was gonna mention like <laughs> epic seems to love acquiring like multiplayer studios yeah and but yeah so uh you may have heard the news mediatonic is joining epic games and so there's there were some questions that people partially including myself had about fall guys which more than likely is if not the main reason, the biggest reason that Epic bought Tonic. Which, because Fall Guys. So Fall Guys will still remain purchasable on Steam. We'll see how long that lasts. Because if you remember Psionics and Rocket League, that lasted, what, less than half a year? That yeah. Rocket League was purchasable on Steam, so we'll see about that. And PlayStation, which I assume it'll still be purchasable on PlayStation, and it's still going to come out for... Switch and Xbox. Will Fall Guys go oh, free to play? Uh, Nothing right now. Keyword, Slade. Right now. Yeah, right now. Um, I'm with you there. I think there's two major takes that I'm taking away from this. Mm -hmm. Take number one, even though like this might not be the best thing for this consumer, this is good for Mediatonic. Primarily because I think everybody here can agree that Fall Guys, in terms of the mainstream months, was kind of losing quite a bit of steam yeah. overall. Yeah, and uh, this kind of gives Mediatonic and Fall Guys that kind of guaranteed future where they don't have to worry about like going bankrupt or yeah. having to go all in on Fall Guys and then not having anything to show for it. So this is still good for the company overall. Yeah, absolutely. But I think this means we're going to start seeing monetization of some sort in Fall Guys. Now, you Whether can, now you can already buy... Or yeah. buying passes or whatever, but yeah. Yeah, I, I could see a future where, uh, for those who don't play Fall Guys, there is the... Or Battle Royales in general, there's obviously the, the Battle Pass. In Fall Guys' case, it's free. But maybe there's a few... Maybe there's a timeline where it's not free. Because you can already buy Kudos... But you can't buy crowns. And, and and again, maybe there's a timeline where crowns are purchasable now for, for real money. Which would suck. But I guess sometimes that's just how the cookie crumbles. So in addition, obviously this is... They're buying Tonic as a whole. So this is Tonic Group. It is made of three different developers, obviously. The biggest one probably is Mediaton, creators of Fall Guys. Fall Guys, yeah. yeah. Uh, there are two other, and they've also made a game called Murder by Numbers, which I've never heard of. Uh, there are two other companies, though, in Tonic Media Group. One is Irregular Corporation. Uh, they are best known for PC Building Simulator. I don't know if that's something you've ever heard of, Slade. I have not, actually. Yeah, it is a simulator game, which are very popular, and it's a PC building simulator game. <laughs> so you can build, you can build a PC with a like an RTX 3090 <laughs> when you can't find them in real life. <laughs> and then there's one other studio, uh, Fortitude Games, and I believe they have not made a single game yet. But they are a studio under the Tonic group but yeah so 
eh, Epic buying another studio. Probably another game gonna leave Steam in like half a year or a year. In fall, guys. But it's good for the developers. We will see if it will be good for the fans. I don't know if you have any final final thoughts, Slade. No, I think I pretty much voiced my total opinion. Like I said, the only time's going to tell at this point what they decide to do. But I think you're pretty spot on. I don't see a world where it continues to remain on Steam or after what, what, like what a year. What purchase or purchasable on Steam? On Steam. Yeah. yeah. So I think at that point, you know, because right now things like kudos and crowns are pretty easy to come by just yeah. by playing the game normally. Yeah, playing. I game imagine game. that will probably change a yeah, little bit for the worst, unfortunately. But yeah, because they're gonna need to. Uh, as I said, they're going to find some way to monetize the game in some way, shape, or short form. Yeah. So that they could turn up a larger profit. Because that's what these large companies do when they get a hold of games like these. So. Yep. And how long... Do, before we head to the next topic, how long do you think it is before Epic buys in or Sloth, if they do? Um, It depends. I think they're probably waiting on the response to the new map that comes out by the end of the month. Oh, yeah, yeah. Quick news note. Uh, the Among Us airship is coming out at the end of uh, March. Yes, and uh, I am very much looking forward to that. Yeah. But uh, that being said, I'm not even sure that Epic would acquire Innersloth devs or Innersloth really? games. Hmm. Yeah, here's the thing. I, I kind of said that, threw that out there, and it's like a little bit of a joke. Mm -hmm. Like, it's something I could see happening, but like, I don't know. I feel like with the uh, outfits in Fall Guys where you could you know, dress up your beans as, like, other characters and stuff like that. Yeah, that is very marketable. That is very marketable. They don't have costumes and whatnot like that, and, uh... Oh, well, they among have DLC, us. Uh, like, outfits, and they have outfits, yeah, so they could but make DLC outfits, potentially. We don't know what the devs are planning in that regard. Yeah, that's And true. there is a bit of a noticeable drop in terms of uh, how many people are playing the game right now. Yeah. But to be fair, it's still one of the most watched games on, like, Twitch and YouTube. Oh, so yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's so definitely something that, you know, big brands and personalities still gravitate towards. Yeah, ab so. yeah absolutely. At and that point, there's still only time will tell how that will turn out. But Yeah, yeah. And I'm not joking when I say, hey, I could see a timeline where Epic buys inner sloth because look at the two companies they have acquired already psionics and te technically tonic media group but media tonic yeah i mean it's like the one everyone's gonna online think of. multiplayer games and what's the what's currently a big online multiplayer game among us yeah I could, for, sure, within, for sure within the next year i could see epic trying to or successfully acquiring inner sloth and if not Epic, then some large major publisher. Yeah, yeah. Someone, I would be shocked if nobody acquired Intersloth. But, uh, right. all right, so on to the next topic. I think a couple of weeks back, a uh, video game got announced that yeah. I'm personally pretty excited for. Yeah, so... Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. Yes, a four-player, a beat-em-up, in the same vein as the old TMNT Turtles in Time on Super Nintendo, which is a great game. Great game. Enjoyed, enjoyed it. Uh, but yeah, this is from Dot Emu, the folks who are also making uh, Windjammers 2, which I'm looking forward to. Yeah. But yeah, this is a multiplayer beat em up. In, Do in we know what TMNT platforms? Turtles in Time. Uh, Do we yes. know what platforms this is going to be on? Uh, everything, as of right now. Everything. I'm Excellent. pretty sure everything. I there is a Steam page confirmed, but I would be shocked if it's not on like PS4, PS5, Xbox consoles, Switch. I'd be shocked if it wasn't. Oh yeah. Everything. So uh, I think it's been a while since we've seen a really prolific beat 'em up kind of hit the market. I know they had the uh, yeah. remaster of uh, 
Scott Pilgrim's versus the world. That came out, I think, fairly recently. Was that last year? Yeah, within Earlier within the year. last like half a year. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I think it's really cool to see uh, another uh, TMNT game. I think it's been a really long time since we've had like a, a beat em up one. from them. <laughs> yeah, or a, a good, good one for that matter. <laughs> yeah, and uh, this appears to be extremely promising. So I'm really looking forward yeah. to it. Absolutely. And Dot Emu are, from what I've seen, great developers. So this game is in the right hands to potentially succeed. For sure, for sure. All right, so let's go over some uh, less optimistic news. We got. So I'll let you introduce Byron. Twitch, 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 man. This fucking website, man. It keeps. (laughs) I'm sorry. Like, I don't want. I'm usually Mr. Pessimist, and there's a reason why I'm Mr. Pessimistic, especially about like Twitch. This announcement, I'm more so pessimistic about, but we'll get to that one. But yeah, uh, Twitch, we are doing our best to protect our streamers from trolls. Also, Twitch, here you go, trolls. And here's another zero cost way to troll the streamers. Yeah. So, obviously, you can cancel subscriptions on Twitch. If you don't know, a subscription on Twitch is different from YouTube. You pay for a subscription. There's there's three different tiers and blah blah blah. Uh, so. Or you can can't you may cancel your sub within ten minutes of purchase and receive a refund. The streamer will not receive any revenue. The thing that people got people didn't get angry about specifically canceling a subscription makes sense to have that. People were mad though that one of the reasons is I just wanted to get a shout out. Yeah, I don't know why Twitch has gone out of their way to basically enable these trolls. To go and fake sub to people and then get themselves refunded. Like, mm-hmm. I think that's terrible. What now, are now, they thinking? Now, I'm going to be the optimistic one. Maybe they have a system in place to detect if, like, someone is, like, in the span of a few minutes or whatever, like, unsubbing, well, canceling their subs for to multiple streamers for this reason. Then... Maybe that maybe they have a system in place, but because it's Twitch, I don't trust them. I don't trust them to have a system in place like that, which is sad. I, sh- which is sad, but but true. To to quote Metallica, <laughs> you know it's sad but true. Like the other reasons, like are fine. Like oh, financial reasons. I accidentally subbed. I only wanted to sub for a month. The channel benefits are not what I expected. Blah, blah, blah. But, yeah. Uh, and it works. Like, Tinny said she confirmed it. It's not just the debate option. It works. Yeah. When I saw that, I was just incredibly saddened because I think at this point, Twitch is doing more and more to hurt their streamers yeah. than their content creators. Mm-hmm. And it's only getting worse and unfortunately this isn't even all of the news that we have from twitch byron what else do we got i'm okay so tw- uh shout outs to Tayari cs on twitter so there is twitch has added an automatic brand safety score which grades how brand friendly every streamer is based on things like chat behavior band history manual ratings by twitch staff games played age auto mod and below uh, the full list of factors are whether for age whether streamer is 18 plus 21 plus or not manual ratings given by twitch staff ban history relationship the streamer has with twitch i don't know what the fuck that means maybe it's like yeah actually i don't know what the fuck that means uh, auto mod partnership status esrb ratings for games played and whether or not the streamer is set to mature or not. So, now, I'm going to actually defend Twitch on this because a few years ago, YouTube implemented a very similar system to this. After, oh god, was it Adpocalypse 2.0 or 3.0? I forget. There are so many fucking I think it was, I definitely think it was 2.0. I think you're on the money there. Yeah. Um Go ahead, keep going. Yeah, yeah. So like, it was, when I 
back in I think it was 2017 or 2018 when YouTube implemented a system like this. I'm like, it's only it's only a matter of time. It was the same thing with DMCA's. Only a matter of time before they come over to Twitch. And there's speculation. This is from again from Teari. Speculation is it's very plausible Twitch could use this to score to maybe deal with the trash ad rates. <laughs> Cause Twitch ad rates are absolute shit. And Twitch has made changes over the past, especially the past few months, that have gone more in the direction of wanting to have more ads on the platform. So maybe this could affect, like, ad rates. Maybe certain creators get better ad rates. Which, you know what? It That would probably be for the better for everybody. Because you get more money for both the platform and the creators. Now, I actually want to hear your take on this, Slade. Okay, so my original take was Scorched Earth. This is Twitch kind of phasing out most of their mature and adult streamers mm -hmm. and trying to cater more towards a wide, interactive, less mature audience, you know, of all ages and whatnot. Yeah, yeah which, is, which is absolutely understandable for a platform. Yeah, it, it's to. understandable, right? It's yeah. understandable. So... Yeah. My original take was Scorched Earth because I was thinking, okay, well, this is them like hyper policing their, uh, you know, platform, and whatnot. This is going to kill off anybody who occasionally like does things like uses the f bomb when they're talking in stream, yeah. or if a streamer is really popular but has a really toxic chat. Yeah, then this was going to affect them a lot. And uh, there's a lot of popular streamers that have really toxic like chats overall oh yes like i could name a for few sure. like for sure like uh tyler one among others uh hell even some like really not toxic streamers like saikuno have really toxic chats so like it's actually kind of like crazy overall but uh then you know i kind of read through everything and we also mm -hmm. have a, a response from twitch support as well and i'll read over that in a minute yes but uh i think that this is still a good move overall. Yeah. It's not like, you know, the perfect scenario where everybody's happy, but mm. that situation that scenario's never was never possible anyway. Yeah, yeah, that scenario, yeah, like it's a like you want to try to get to that like yin yang as much as possible, but you there's never going to be a good middle ground for everybody. I am. Yeah. But the thing is, I think ultimately as long as they make this kind of information available for the streamer themselves yeah. to look over. Yeah, absolutely. And they have features that allow a streamer that's popular to rebrand themselves so that they're not just blacklisted by, like, the ability to get ads and whatnot, then I'm definitely all for this change. I definitely think that this it could be an improvement for the platform overall. Mm. Well, I, but well, yeah, I think even without we need the things. score being known to the streamer because on youtube you're i don't believe your score is known anyway, no but i think so. it should be in my it, opinion it, yeah it, it, but that's like that's another topic for another day but i i suppose so i suppose so uh so you said and... twitch uh made a response yeah so in the comments here twitch uh support clarified to the original tweeter tayari mm -hmm. that uh Hey, Tiari, we're exploring ways to make sure ads are appro appropriately matched to the right communities on Twitch. Looking at a number of different factors, nothing has launched yet, and no personal information was shared. Yeah, so, so I they, think they were trying yeah. to iterate that, you know, we're not sharing personal information and all that. I mean, they said as much themselves. Yeah. And they're really just matching it back, because I think they're also going to have, you know, ads from mature companies as well. You, also you would, you going think, out but... with mature streams. I would hope so, anyway. Yeah, you would hope. But, yeah. But... So this was something that Tayari found, like, themselves. They, this wasn't, like, this was, they just found it somewhere in Twitch's code. So I guess it wasn't supposed to be public yet. Yeah, yeah, so there's a couple of things that has me concerned about it overall. Okay. So you brought up one of them, and this ties into another one. Mm -hmm. Manual rating given by Twitch sta staff and relationship streamer has with Twitch. Yeah. The reason why I find those two things very alarming is because you have situations where uh, 
some streamers have been caught doing reprehensible and terrible things. Um, yeah. Best examples I can give is Senpai. And uh, another one, um, his name is uh, James Charles, I believe. Mm-hmm. I won't get into the specific of either of those two cases. But not only do they remain, you know, still live on the platform and they're not banned for any of the reprehensible things that they've done, but they, in the, in the case of James Charles, he's still getting monetization and like stuff like that. And he's still one of the most popular streamers on the platform. And there's lots of like examples you could point to. Like, I think this one streamer like tossed her dog on stream mm-hmm. once. Yeah. And then you have a lot of, uh, streamers that kind of consistently break the rules but most of them being girls and once again that's neither here nor there um Mm -hmm. and it feels like they police a lot of um a lot of the other content creators on the platform except for ones that they've taken particular favor with yeah and i think that has a lot of people including myself very concerned and so I don't want to go into the specifics on like any individual streamers or details because I'm not coming out here to like try and attack people left and right or say that Twitch needs to do a better job of that. I'm just saying that overall, I'm just I'm concerned because I don't think Twitch has proven that they have a very objective background in terms of like evaluating these content creators and properly moderating their platform yeah they, yeah they don't have the the track record that yeah that's that's what i was looking yeah, for they, track yeah, record. They, yeah they don't have the track record but yeah uh so this is a still i guess a partially dead story but it's i guess kind of still developing uh an update uh this has been removed from twitch's api since and I actually uh, agree with this. Uh, This change was a good change as it would help Twitch target ads better, which would help them get to a level, to the level of a YouTube on advertising sense, thus leading to creators earning more. Also, every other social media platform already has their own version of this implemented. This is a consequence of the social media world of today as advertisements are a critical part of the revenue of social media platforms and advertisers will pay more if they know that their advertising money is being used in the most efficient way possible. And for the most part, I, and I pretty much agree with that. Like, this, Yeah, I do think this is good news overall, though. Yeah, overall, this like, would have been a good change. Now, Twitch may bring this back later on, which I hope, I hope they do for the sake of the streamers, because they can... Because while it may hurt some people inadvertently, like YouTube's brand score system did, I think in the end it would help more people than it would hurt make more money on Twitch. Which is good for the streamers and good for the platform, I feel. So. For sure, for sure. So, uh, also, this probably isn't, you know, very high on the list of Twitch's priorities right now. I know right now the creators in Twitch still have a problem with, you know, copyright in terms of music and stuff oh, yeah, like the, that oh yeah the the dmca tools that they released the the first batch we talked about that. we actually talked about that a while ago they, they finally yeah. released uh the first of like i think their second of like four steps they were doing they finally released those tools uh a few days ago so they're, they're that's finally that but yeah uh so obviously we're gonna keep track of what the fuck twitch is doing with all this how this will affect streamers and and blah blah blah. Yeah, but basically, all I was getting at is uh, even with this going on, Twitch still has much bigger fish to fry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They at the uh, moment, yeah, they definitely have bigger fish to fry. And uh, speaking of a uh, big fish to fry, so this announcement was uh, pretty huge, and this is something that kind of caught a lot of people off guard. Absolutely. But not in the sense that it's a bad thing overall, just so much that this is pretty much huge for the future of esports, particularly esports involving fighting games. Yes. And uh, I'll just get into it. Sony has acquired Evo. 
Yeah, PlayStation you, and you RTS it. have acquired Evo. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that was definitely a bit of a bombshell announcement. And uh, it kind of just shows that there's been a growing interest in terms of the large publishers and developers wanting to get more involved with esports. Yeah, so, look, yeah, look at what well, I, I don't know if we covered it on the show, but Microsoft bought Smash.gg a while back. Yeah, which is something that, you know, I think we talked about a little bit, but it wasn't like our big announcement for mm-hmm. that week. Yeah. And now you have PlayStation acquiring the largest fighting game tournament series in the entire world. Yeah. Uh, it's Evo, basically yeah. the Super Bowl of fighting games. Yeah. The biggest event for fighting games. But yeah. Yeah. One of the largest esports events in the world happens every year. Except last year, but we've we haven't gone over it personally in the channel, but mm. I think everyone knows what happened with last year being canceled due to both the pandemic and some uh, yeah, certain and, uh, individual doing things behind the scenes. Yeah, the, yeah, the hashtag speaking out movement in May of last year. But yeah, Sony, fucking this came out of nowhere because so does Sony? What fighting games does Sony have? I don't think, but they have most of the third party fighting games though. Well, I know they have a lot of, you know, a lot of the current games on the market, on their platform, and I don't think yeah. Sony's going to rule this thing with such an iron fist that uh, they won't allow anything that's not on a PlayStation to not be there. But uh, we can go more into the specifics about that when we talk about that later. So what does this mean for Evo specifically? Let's go, at, let's break it down step by step. So yeah. for Evo being the largest, you know, fighting games, esports event in the world. They are no longer independent like they have been. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of concerns after the whole situation with uh, Joey Sellers last year kind of being outed yeah. for all the things he did. We won't get into specifics about that. Mm-hmm. And there is also a large concern for what that would mean for the future yeah. of Evo. So with this sale and acquisition here, this means that the future for Evo is very bright because now they have the big backing of a... Uh, major publisher who's going to financially invest in them and believe in what they do and they don't have the continued negative stigma that joey sellers kind of had attached to them with them anymore that's no longer baggage they have to carry yeah absolutely and that would be and that will definitely be for the good for the good yeah that's definitely the best news of the acquisition so far um another thing that this means is uh, it shows that and we just touched a bit on this briefly Mm. that major publishers and even the big console developers themselves are getting much more invested in esports overall well two of the three but we'll get into that in a minute (laughs) well two or three yes that is something we're going to talk about very extensively later yeah but talking about the future for esports as a whole yeah it's i think this is big this is real it's looking bright right now yeah so uh now, what this means for specific fighting games, and we'll save the one everyone's thinking about for last. Yeah. Um, so most fighting games that are developed right now are developed for all platforms, for the most part. Yeah, and I, With and the I think- exception of some of the higher-end ones, they don't put those on the Switch, which, understandably, the Switch is weaker, so it can't handle it. Yeah, yeah, and I think, I think that will continue to be the case. Yeah, so this isn't going to be like, oh, well, we can no longer have this game or that game here because, you know, it has to be a Sony exclusive or something like that. Yeah, I don't think Sony is going to please Evo to that extent. In fact, I think it's going to be more other companies policing what games are at Evo. So let's talk a bit about Microsoft because, you know, Microsoft owns the exclusive rights to things like Killer Instinct and stuff like that. Yeah. 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 Um, I imagine if uh, Microsoft wants to, you know, have their games out in the public sphere and mm-hmm. whatnot, people talking about it, hardcore fighting game community, yes. they're not going to ban having their games at Evo. They're going to want their games to be on the biggest stage in the entire world. Yeah. And this just means that Sony's going to take have to get a little bit of the cut of the pie that they otherwise wouldn't have. So, yeah. This is really Sony looking ahead to the future and making a really smart move. 
Yeah. Because it's not like Microsoft can be like, okay, well, we're going to have our own, you know, fighting game tournament. Because well, well, ultimately, they, they could they could down the road, but as of right now, it's not looking like that. Yeah, and the one thing that works out really well for Microsoft, because it seems like Sony kind of, you know, they took the Super Bowl, right? They just bought the Super yeah, Bowl yeah. fighting they, game. They took the, the biggest piece of the fighting game pie possible. Microsoft's got a pretty sizable bit of the pie of their own because Smash GG is the go-to website for, you know, developing brackets for these fighting games and whatnot and setting up tournaments. So. Yeah, everybody getting the piece of the pie. <laughs> Yeah, so I would say that Microsoft isn't like coming off too shabby themselves, and they could easily acquire other tournaments like CEO and things like that. Not I, not that I'm like saying that these publishers need to buy all these you know tournaments and all that. Yeah, ab- ab- absolutely. Uh, so but... Sony, so Sony put out a blog on sieblog.com welcoming welcoming Evo into the family basically. And a a note, Mortal Kombat 11 Ultimate will only operate in North America, Europe, and Latin America regions. And that basically, yeah, EVO Online is, it's coming, it's still happening, it's happening this year since it didn't last year. And basically, as of right now, they're not going to police what consoles are used, which is good. Even though yeah, I said, yeah. I no. don't think they're going to get to that level where they're policing which consoles are used, primarily mm. because all these games are all multi-platform. Yeah, and and so. they either pl- they either play on PlayStation or or PC unless you're a, a certain other big fighting franchise. Yeah. So now we're going to talk about the one everybody's thinking about, and this isn't something that I see Sony themselves doing. So, obviously, what does this mean for Nintendo and even more in particular Super Smash Brothers? Yeah, what, so, what does it mean? The thing is, I don't think Sony would go out of their way to ban Smash from appearing at Evo. No, Sony Unless they felt it. like they were taking out a major competitor. And they even them themselves confirmed that they wouldn't do that, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, Sony would actually want Smash at Evo since it's consistently one of the top most viewed and most participated games of Evo. Oh yeah, for sure. And it's also like the highest selling fighting game of Of all all time. time. Like it would be a mistake to go out of their way to bar Smash for participating for all parties involved. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately one party involved doesn't have the common sense to see that. Yeah, so and Nintendo, now yeah. we're going to touch on what the real issue is. Yeah, so, so Nintendo, Nintendo gave a statement to IGN saying it will, quote, continue to assess Evo and other opportunities as we plan for future online and offline Super Smash Brothers tournament activities, unquote. So that's IMO standard speak for shrug the shoulders, and we're not going to do anything. <laughs> or we're going to do something people hate. Yes. So that's standard PR speak for whatever we decide. Y'all just have to put up with it. And uh, yep. I think this is kind of the nail in the coffin for Smash Brothers at Evo. I think there was already a bit of a uh, issue in regards to Smash at Evo. Probably because due to the... Uh, mass outage of uh, pedophilia and whatnot last yeah. summer. Yeah. And Evo, Joey Sellers being such a large part of that. But I think the most publicized uh, community where that massive outage happened was the Smash community. And I think Nintendo is not at all pleased that their, one of their greatest selling IP is associated with that. Yeah, I don't think yeah, they're pleased at all. Because for a while... In, during, I think, May and June of 2020, it was, like, the trending topic on Twitter and one of the trending topics on Twitter and social media. So I could definitely yeah. see why Nintendo, even more so than ever, are wanting to reel, reel in on dealing with the competitive scene in any way, shape, or form. And I 100% get that. The competitive players make up 
IMO a small majority of the sales or a small minority of the sales. Yeah, small minority. Yeah. That's for sure. And here's the thing, like Nintendo's always been really difficult to work with in regards to uh, Smash and esports in general. Yeah, look at They look have at, previously at, tried to withhold Smash from Evo before, yep. even though it got entered because the fans of Smash donated like what, a million dollars or something to charity? Yeah. And Nintendo that's why. aren't going to stop charity, so they're like, okay, we're going to throw our hands in the air on this one. It's charity. Just... Yeah. Well, That'll at first they tried really to, but mm -hmm. then, you know, it backfired on them because it looked really bad, right? Yeah, which is why so... they threw their hands in the air and like, okay, you're y'all are doing this for charity, all right. We'll just leave, we'll leave you alone for now. Yeah, that's far from the only thing Nintendo's done to shut down competitive Smash. They have also had uh, multiple deals with other companies like Red Bull and whatnot in the works yeah. for uh, running large uh, circuits for mm -hmm. Super Smash Brothers. But those ultimately yeah. fell through because Nintendo's just extremely uncooperative in that regard. Yeah, they want total control, which is understandable. Which the funny thing is they were actually told and granted that they would have total control of everything in regards to smash hmm. and then they still ended up like ghosting red bull and shit like that which is crazy huh. so that's nuts that's just one issue that nintendo had run into uh the most uh popular issue that happened lately was the whole you know stance against slippy yep where yep. uh they shut down the big house i think this was what back in i think it was back in I think this was either back at the, like, the very beginning of the year of this year or like towards the end of last year. It was definitely last year. Yeah. So they shut down the big house and they decided, well, they're using emulation. Therefore, all the copies they're using are illegally required, which they can't actually prove that. Yeah, and emulators in of themselves are legal. Are in fact legal. So yeah. it was bullshit. The whole thing was bullshit. And the reason yeah. why they did that is because they're trying to shut down melee as a competitive esport because yeah. they want everybody to be playing the new game they want everyone to be playing ultimate and buying ultimate and melee has consistently been a thorn in their side in regards to publicity for them mm -hmm. for decades now yeah well and originally before the pandemic smash melee wasn't even going to be a part of evo and then obviously with the pandemic it wasn't going to be like so smash melee i believe was already on its way out of evo well yeah I, it was going to be ultimate only i think that's something nintendo probably worked out with them and plus i think all the other fighting game communities were like why does smash always get two titles every year well i think i think it's like that, that and the... but i think it was more that nintendo wanted it to be ultimate only. well, well and but... crt well and good luck finding fucking crt yeah and here's in the 2021 when melee in and i guess this is kind of unrelated but when melee comes back i think they're moving on from crts i think there's been a large discussion in the community where they pretty much have to go with monitors it's just you can't continue to lug crts around it's just not going to work out in the long term Hey, it, so, it, it, uh, it is back... a work out, though, to, yeah. to carry them. <laughs> I mean, it's really hard on TOs, too, because they have to have, like, 20 or 30 of yeah. those, and they have to, like, carry a whole bunch of them. And... Yeah. Yeah, it's just not feasible. And then, like, CRTs aren't easily acquirable. Nobody's making them anymore. It's not like somebody could just donate a whole bunch or a large company could donate a whole bunch. Yeah. Because nobody Whereas uses with them monitors, anymore. monitors... You all not only can you get monitors much easier, but that also opens the door for like sponsorships and things like that. Yeah. So like you get a deal with uh like, Acer or something yeah, and then Acer, they Acer, BenQ, like LG, someone like that. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. back on the whole Evo side of things and discussion. Yeah. But more in particular to Melee. I, I think you're right. I think Melee was on its way out the door overall. I yeah. said whether it's uh the CRTs, like you were saying, or I think honestly, Nintendo just wanted Ultimate because anything they could do to make the current Smash title the one people are talking about, yeah, they're gonna try to do it. Oh, ab absolutely. So. But I, yeah, I think this is gonna be a case of Sony want obviously wants Smash at Evo 
Because most Smash players that go to Evo or watch Evo generally watch just Smash. Now, some obviously play other games and watch other games. But yeah. it's not it's not that big of a like a Venn diagram crossover. I think it's gonna be more so Nintendo is gonna yeet Smash Ultimate out of Evo just just because A Sony is in part owner of Evo and probably B just Nintendo's anti competitive community stance. Yeah, honestly from how I see the situation I think Sony gives them the excuse that they're looking for. Nintendo has always been lukewarm to the idea of competitive esports. Oh, abso absolutely. And I think that this is their out that they're looking for, for in terms of Evo. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you're still going to see Smash at like CEO, Genesis, and things like that. I guess the big house might be a future issue simply because Nintendo shut them down despite having previously sponsored them. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's kind of really unfortunate that that's happened. But yeah. when uh, IRL tournaments come back, which I think that's going to happen sooner than later, now mm -hmm. that you know the vaccine's out in full force and all that, mm -hmm. um, there's going to be a large surge of Melee players in general, simply because Melee got a lot of publicity during that whole big house stunt. Yeah, it's and, kind and of it like got, yeah, and it got publicity because of Slippy. Yeah, so I think for a lot of people, this is kind of like a second wave of popularity, kind of just searching through Melee in general, mm -hmm. simply yep. because after the initial deal or deal with Evo, where Nintendo tried to shut them down, yeah, it drew a lot of public attention to them, mm -hmm. and then a lot of people got interested in playing. I think that's what's happening again here. And I feel like every yeah. time Nintendo tries to, you know, quote unquote, take them behind the shed and put them down, so to speak, <laughs> yeah. they just make the situation worse for themselves. Yeah, old yeller. Old yeah. Because <laughs> the melee community, they're really passionate and they refuse to die. And I don't think, I think they would have to ban melee off of Twitch entirely in order to like straight up kill melee. Yeah, and, and that's, that may happen in the future, that may not. Yeah. So uh, now on to uh, the more current side of things with Ultimate. Mm -hmm. So Ultimate is a game, obviously, Nintendo wants to advertise. They want to have in front of as many people as possible. Yeah. And Evo is the biggest no-brainer mm -hmm. in the world. The problem is, in that regard, it's not that Nintendo doesn't want to support Ultimate competitively or from an esports perspective, because they do. Maybe not to the same extent as Melee. <laughs> Or, like, at all with Melee for that regard. But the thing is, I don't know if they're willing to straight up be like, okay, look, Sony's going to get a piece of our pie here. And Nintendo is pretty notorious for not wanting to share, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Nintendo has kind of done their own thing where uh, they have these items on kind of like tournaments that they show casually to fans, but yeah. nobody cares about this. Nobody cares about this. And, uh, Right now, Ultimate's relevance is really just hanging on because of DLC characters. Agreed. Because uh, overall, online play is an absolute disaster for Ultimate. It doesn't really work because the netcode is absolutely fucking terrible. Yeah. <laughs> and Nintendo is running it off Windows 98. That is 100% confirmed, by the I way. I thought it was Windows XP. No, it's Windows 98. Oh, bro. 98. Okay. Yeah, it's Windows 98. Uh, it's, it's actually kind of sad. Oh, that, that's still funny. Yeah, so uh, because of that, they're extremely reliant on having these in-person tournaments for Ultimate to be in the large public sphere. Mm -hmm. So it would make sense financially for them to be like, yeah, we need, you know, Smash at Evo. We're going to allow Smash at Evo because, like, it just it makes a lot of sense. It's the biggest esports fighting game event in the world. Why mm -hmm. wouldn't you want your fighting game back? Nintendo, the problem is yeah. Nintendo's not the kind of company that makes decisions based off of common sense. Yeah, there are some decisions that Nintendo make that make you tilt your head and go, wait, wait, wait why'd you do that? Wait, 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 Yeah, what? but why, though? <laughs> yeah, but, yeah but, <laughs> but why, why, though? <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, so because of that, because they've kind of made quite a few decisions that are honestly questionable at best mm -hmm. from time to time. Yeah. You really can't give them the benefit of the doubt in yeah. regards to what how they want to try to push back. Especially because of their track record with esports in general. Yeah. So Which I think great. a lot of people are very reasonably concerned that we're not going to see Smash at Evo at all. Yeah. And uh, we don't know what kind of chain effect this is going to have at Smash at other events. If they're going to be like, nope, Smash can't be at CEO, Smash can't be at anything. Yeah, so yeah. It'll be, it'll be to interesting to see what, what, what potential domino effects Nintendo potentially pulling Smash out of Evo has on every other major event. Because you're still going to have the, the weeklies, the, the mini events, the not big scale events. Yeah, for sure. So, and here's the thing. You, we already know at, you know, some degree or level that Nintendo still acknowledges, you know, their competitive scene for Smash entirely. Yeah, Especially because Sakurai why, was like doing shit like have... going over frame data and whatnot and Pyra and Mythos trailer. And yeah, they're like, other... oh, this is for competitive players, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, otherwise, why would they have the Nintendo versus Twitter account? Yeah, so it's not like they're dipping out of this, you know, competitive esports entirely. But I think they're trying to do something. They might try to do something where they try to take the grassroots out of it and they try to control everything. Yeah. And they do a terrible job because they're kind of tone deaf to how to run these kinds of events and stuff like that. And it just ultimately doesn't work out. Yeah. Yes, but I think that's the big concern for everybody. Yeah. So uh, back to Evo outside of Nintendo. This is still, regardless, a fantastic thing for Evo. Like I said, they get to disassociate themselves from Joey Sellers even more. Yeah. Which I, I feel like they already did. Yeah. But like... Knowing that it's owned and it's being ran by like a large console publisher, yeah, and company, mm -hmm. honestly makes the brand feel that much more official. Which Evo already felt like extremely official because obviously it's Super Bowl yeah, fighting. Yeah, it's games. the biggest fighting game event of the year. But as I said, having that big publisher behind them is only going to help them. As I said, they were already making hella bank on a yearly basis. And now they're on Sony's payroll. Hopefully this means that uh, TOs, among a lot of other things at Evo, are going to be fully paid employees and treated fairly and whatnot. Because there's a lot of horror stories over the past five years in regards to how people who volunteered to run tournaments and whatnot were treated mm -hmm. by Evo staff. Yeah. yeah. As well as how hard it was to get paid and things like that. Mm -hmm. Having the big company run the payroll is going to be immensely great for them. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see if Sony in of themselves comes in with a fighting game of their own or uses Evo to reveal a fighting game of their own. See, I part have, of I, me I thinks... See that. I could see that being a possibility at some point down the road. See, I thought about that as well, but part of me wonders whether or not in terms of, they might make like an original IP for a fighting game, yeah. but I don't see them doing a crossover fighting game with all of their top IPs ever again. Yeah, primarily yeah. because PlayStation All Stars was the failure that it was, it, it and that a, was more about politics base. behind the scenes. Than yeah, it, it, it had else. a decent base, but like. See, because here's the thing: it, the politics didn't get as bad behind the scenes as they did in regards to some of the IP that yeah. they were trying to get in and all that yeah. jazz. Then I think yeah. PlayStation All Stars would have been way more well received, despite the fact that the game had a lot of really inherent flaws with the gameplay. Kind of like how the game was absolutely and terribly unbalanced on top of relying on finishers to quote-unquote take lives or stocks yeah yeah absolutely. instead of like traditional you know like with smash talking about stuff. it's like it tried to be smash without anything that makes smash good yeah <laughs> yeah it tried to comp work. it tried to be playstation smash without all the nintendo-esque stuff about smash well even then the idea for a platform fighter being about knocking the other character off the stage and killing them 
that's not something that's just specific to Smash. There are other platform fighters like Rivals of Aether, Brawl, Hala, etc. Yeah, but Smash is where like they have the, the same concept of trying to knock off the enemy off the stage. Yeah, they didn't have that in PlayStation All Stars, and I think that was the biggest thing that hurt their gameplay. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, as I've already touched a bit on the politics in regards to like how some characters they weren't able to acquire mm-hmm. because. Oh, Snake's in Smash, so you guys can have uh, Raiden instead for Metal Gear Solid. Or, oh, well, we don't want to give you guys Cloud for Final Fantasy VII because we're actually going to put him in Smash eventually. Oh, shit. Yeah. And Sony couldn't get a hold of a lot of their IPs like uh, regards like that. So they couldn't get a hold of, like, Crash or Spyro yeah. from Activision. Yeah. Yeah. When they got Dante from Dylan McCry, they got the shitty reboot version instead of, you know, <laughs> actual Dante. Uh, but yeah. So, uh, like, then there's a lot of, like, I can't remember what's his name from The Legend of the Dragoon was playing for base roster and then DLC and then ultimately just never happened. Yeah. That upset a lot of fans. And, like, ultimately, it just kind of felt like the, the whole thing was a shit show. Mm-hmm. But... But yeah, and it didn't help that the gameplay wasn't good either. So, yeah, but yeah, uh, Sony and uh, esports venture RTS they they have Evo, and uh, whoo, yeah, never, never thought a major console company would buy any fighting game tournament, let alone Evo. Well, see, I was kind of tipped off that we were going to see some stuff like this by Microsoft buying Smash GG because I feel like that was kind of like the first domino to fall in that regard. I didn't think Evo of all things would be bought out simply because Evo is like really massive. Yeah, absolutely. But I still think that these companies were going to kind of start worming their way into some of these smaller scale tournaments, kind of buying them out bit by bit. Yeah. And then kind of controlling the pie as a whole in regards to esports. Because like I said, they see what Riot Games did to League of Legends once League of Legends popped up. They basically went to every independent tournament organize- organizer like, no, this is our game. We're going to hold our own esports events. And they shut down all those grassroots events, right? Yeah, yeah. And then they see what, you know the developers for Counter-Strike did with their game, and then pretty much everybody looked at what Riot did and be like, yeah, we're doing that for our game. So Overwatch did it for Overwatch League, and, mm-hmm. you know, to everyone, all the developers were like, we're going to control our own esports events. Yeah. And I think Microsoft and Sony are seeing, you know, something like Evo and all these other fighting games as an esport, and they're like, yeah, we want some of this pie too. Like, we might not have, you know, a major esports title of our own that like we're publishing. So we're just gonna buy the platform instead. Yeah, and well, it will only be like what, five months until we see how a Sony run Evo event of any kind uh looks because mid August is gonna be Evo Online twenty twenty one. So it'll be very interesting to see how a Sony run Evo, even if it's online goes i think um because it's going to be like midsummer and whatnot i think there's real potential that it might actually be an irl tournament i'm not saying it's like guaranteed that it will be but i think with the vaccine coming out and whatnot that hopefully this is going to help flatten the curve a bit and get us to a position where you know our country can safely reopen but uh, as I said, obviously, I don't think they're going to force something that's just not capable of happening for sure. But uh, there's some other aspects that I didn't really get into in regards in talks with. So one of Evo's largest supporters and sponsors has always been Capcom. Yeah. Because they put, make it part of, you know, the Capcom World Tour that they do for, you know, Street Fighter pretty much every year and whatnot. And mm. uh it's going to be interesting what Capcom's relationship with Evo is going to be, considering now it's owned by Sony. I think it's going to stay the same. Well, I think there's potential for some change there. Obviously, they're not going to pull their games or whatnot. But there's a real possibility that Capcom might not be as financially invested in Evo as they were before. 
Honestly, if you had told me before Sony had acquired Evo, if any company would acquire Evo, who would it be? I would have said Capcom, simply I, because Capcom has already put a lot of money and support into Evo over the span of the last two decades. I, I, I don't think Capcom would have had the money, though. Like, well, Sony's got money. PlayStation true. itself has money. But yeah, it's not just PlayStation. It's also the fact that they sell TVs, wires, like all sorts of stuff, right? Well, PlayStation's their only division that is profitable. Yeah. But I'm just saying that Sony is a much larger company than just video games. They're a ginormous company. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, like one of the big companies bought, one of the big console makers bought Evo. Like, yeah. Just a WTF story. To so uh, WTF week, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose so. So, uh, guys, I think that is everything we have for you guys today. Yep. So, this has been Byron. And this has been Slade. And uh, if you enjoyed, if you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel. Give it a like. Comment below if you have any thoughts on any of our topics today. And uh, we will see you all next week. Bye bye.